Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're gonna talk about Warner Media, Cartoon Network, Aqua Teen, Hunger Force, and kind of everything going on in the world right now. Um, you know, we did a video yesterday talking about Toonami's BLM message, and man, did we get a lot of feedback, uh, both positive and negative, on our take, which was it seemed a little disingenuine at this point and it also seemed very heavy-handed uh it seemed like they were trying very hard to tell the audience that they were racist even if they thought they weren't racist and uh we did get a lot of hot takes in the comments section <laughs> so you know what are you gonna do but uh one thing we did say in that video was we thought that warner media right now which again owns cartoon network owns toonami owns crunchyroll uh, that they're they're kind of freaking out right now, trying to look like they're on uh, the right side of history. But their very recent past shows that they've been making some some questionable decisions when it comes to black folks in the animation industry for for quite some time. And this article was floating around yesterday. Uh, this is uh, coming from Forbes, talking about. Aqua Teen Hunger Force, one of my favorite shows on Cartoon Network, uh, Adult Swim, by the way. But it was very interesting to see how Frylock's voice actor is being treated in comparison to the other actors on the show. Now, I'm not saying necessarily it's a race thing, but Frylock's voice actor does happen to be African American, and he also is based out of Georgia which is a little bit different because we're going to talk about uh, voice actors and, and the Screen Actors Guild and all of that. And there's a lot of controversy uh, around that right now. But basically, Frylock hasn't made a, a dime uh, off of the show. His voice actor hasn't made a dime off of this show since it went off the air, whereas I believe his, his counterparts, his co-workers, are still getting royalty checks because they're part of the Screen Actors Guild and they're in California. Um, so kind of throw this on top of the pile of complaints coming from Rooster Teeth. Uh, Mika Burton saying that she didn't have a problem with the fans. You know, the fans that Rooster Teeth like to say are racist homophobes on the wrong side of history but she had a problem with rooster teeth themselves uh, add to this the fact that crunchyroll that went out of their way to make sure that uh, everybody knew everybody knew how diverse crunchyroll was and apparently apparently they're not taking pitches uh from from african-american creators because now they're afraid of diversity because of the backlash due to High Guardian Spice being marketed solely on its diversity, not on its story, not on its animation, but solely on the fact that we had a bunch of LGBTQ people working on it. Um, you know, I, I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, Rooster Teeth is now purging its content. Toonami is now putting out BLM messages three months after the fact. Uh, Warner Media also owns Ellen, and they're, they're doing all kinds of investigations over there. Cartoon Network has had a change at the top, and the woman they're bringing in uh, to, to shake it up over there, part of her title includes diversity and inclusivity, if I'm not mistaken. So something is going on, is what I'm trying to get to. Something is going on over at Warner Media. And again, this does seem to be the case that when people go out of their way to project and deflect that uh, the audience, the audience is the problem. We're not the problem. Uh, a lot of times there's some stuff going on behind the scenes. Now, this article is more than two years old, but it's very interesting to see uh, how this, this went down. Carrie Means is the voice of Frylock on Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And according to this article, he has not been getting royalties. Now, he is not part of the Screen Actors Guild, and I, I want to talk about that because that has been a complaint with voice actors right now. I know Transformers, there was, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about that too. Of course, Transformers, uh, create, you know, uh, animated by Rooster Teeth, is in the middle of a bunch of controversy right now because they sidestepped the Screen Actors Guild, Voice Actors Guild, uh, whatever it's called, to basically cast scabs you know, for the role, cast people out of Texas who didn't have to belong to the unions. So they, they bypassed the unions. And as a result of that, they, they missed out on Peter Cullen and Frank Welker, you know, the most well-known voices of Optimus and Megatron. And they've made their, their displeasure known. But it does seem that, like, that group 
is is doing some eh, you know questionable stuff and then they're throwing shade at the uh that the audience they're blaming the audience for their own shortcomings isn't this typical welcome to 2020 that's how that's how all of this goes i uh, also want to point out before we talk more about um carry means and uh, how he's not getting royalties off of aqua Teen hunger force he is doing the con circuit just um just a couple of months ago this is coming from bubble blabber cartoon site and i guess these people really hate us uh i don't know i don't even know who they are but i thought it was interesting he he and sad he had to put up a, a gofundme in july and i'm gonna put a link to that in the description a gofundme to cover the cost of removing a tree that had fallen on his house and, and speaking speaking of which uh a tree fell on our neighbor's house the neighbor behind us and uh, they're doing construction so if you hear chainsaws and power drills and hammers and all that uh that's what's going on we talked about it in another video uh can't block it out and i want her to get the hole in her roof her roof patched up as soon as she can because it's been raining quite a bit here but yeah he's he's going to go fund me for expenses like this and meanwhile it looks like his his co-stars are, are just kind of you know kicking back and getting royalties um so this was very interesting uh, i gotta give a shout out to rainbow squid inc um long time long time uh follower of the channel by the way i think she's been watching us and commenting since pretty much the beginning i want to say under 10,000 subs so she's one of our og fans uh thank you for that i had no idea and this is actually very sad this is from yeah about two and a half three years ago they're talking about the cast of aqua Teen hunger force being at denver comic-con and they're talking about um you know some of the uh, some of the voice actors are talking about how it's kind of a privileged life and they love it and they're working on squid billies and fish hooks fish hook remember fish hooks thundermans remember that uh and all of that but um one of the voice actors dana snyder who does master shake uh he was talking about his finances now this is forbes so they're talking about finances without divulging financial particulars Snyder's portrait of his life on a cartoon salary is likely within the bounds of what most would imagine for the voice of a famed talking cup and more. His everyday voice is disarming in ordinary conversation and requires only a snappy huff of sass to become the comically insufferable master shake. To hear Snyder discuss himself and his life directly, the jovial 43-year-old family man comes across as extremely grateful to have made a solid living working in the world of cartoons. Uh, I would say I have a privileged lifestyle. He says I have a house in California right now. This is three years ago, so I don't know if that has changed or not. Right now, my wife doesn't work, but she's going to school to get her doctorate. And probably if it was 10 years ago, we would not be able to do that. And we have a three year old daughter and two dogs. I have a very nice life. My house is not big. It's about 1400 square feet. Yeah, but in Southern California, that's expensive. Uh, but it's in Southern California. It's easy living. I mean, I work in a competitive business, but everybody's pretty nice it's uh like cartoons so you don't have this high pressure like when you're in a big network show or something the people that gravitate towards cartoons all seem to be very friendly they like cartoons it takes a certain type of person you know like snyder and to a lesser extent uh the show creator dave willis who also voices meet wad and carl carrie means again frylock's voice actor has been making the rounds at comic cons and more for years on the strength of his work on aqua Teen hunger force as the voice of Frylock, the levitating box of French fries who served as the show's straight man and lone purveyor of intelligence and restraint, means who lives in Atlanta, this is kind of important, lives in Atlanta where the show was produced, says the role kept him afloat against eviction, financial issues, you name it, but that he's nowhere near as comfortable as people think. The thing is, people assume that I get royalties from the show. I do not, means said. I don't receive any royalties, back pay nothing from DVD sales, primarily because I live in Georgia, which is a right to work state. And this is this is what happened, I think, with Transformers too. Dana might get royalties because he's in the Screen Actors Guild in LA, but I don't. I got one flat fee per episode, nothing on the back end. It was about 2,000 uh, per episode toward the end of the series and almost 10,000 for the movie. When asked to elaborate on those circumstances in several email follow-ups, Means declined to explain why Georgia's right to work law dissuaded or otherwise prevented him from attempting to unionize uh, with uh, the Screen Actors Guild and negotiate residuals in his contract. Um, 
as opposed to his other celebrity counterparts at the Denver Comic-Con, like John Cusack, Felicia Day, and Lou Ferrigno, means is essentially present from basic financial necessity, out to earn his guarantee from the three-day weekend event. And this is true. We've had this, we've had this too. People bring us used to bring us in uh, to conventions. They would give us a guarantee. Not as much as John Cusack, I'm sure, but we got enough to basically cover our expenses to show up. A guarantee is the contractual amount organizers determine the celebrity will make in signings and photo ops. Although he also has a new animated show on Nickelodeon to help uh, promote called Welcome to the Wayne, in which he's reunited with Willis and Snyder, means is the rare television personality who has to commit a portion of his life to a humble day job. Back at home in Atlanta, the Golden Voice 50-year-old works part-time as a dishwasher for a local gastropub to help make ends meet. I've met a few dishwashers in my travels going to these conventions because I always ask people what they do for a living. That's actually not unusual. There are a lot of people who, look, I mean, there are ebbs and flows to careers and there are a lot of people that you would think they would have a lot of money now and they don't. I talked about child actors before and somebody in the comments said that Gary Coleman, like his, his parents stole all his money and, and that happens. It does happen. Um, he says, I was talking to this one guy this morning. He works at an aerospace company and he puts the stickers on the damn jets. That's his job. So I love asking people what they do, and I tell them, yeah, I got a regular day job. I'm not rolling in the dough, though. Somebody on Facebook was like, Ev enjoy those royalties, my friend. I'm like, what royalties? Ain't no royalties for Frylock. Uh, he says, I'm not happy about not getting royalties, but I ain't got no bitterness for nobody uh, from doing that show. I enjoyed it. Frylock saved my ass a lot of times, believe you me. This is sad. This is heartbreaking. I mean, this really is. I had no idea. I had no idea. I just, I guess I just assumed that everybody who worked on this show got royalties because that is kind of the normal way to do things. But again, he he's based in Atlanta and not in California. Now, I don't know if he could have joined because, you know, technically it was produced in California or what, but you know, when you, again, when you've got Warner out there and it's not just Warner, it's all these companies telling people that they're they're racist like this article is from two and a half years ago and i'm thinking maybe because of the forbes article somebody at cartoon network maybe sat up took notice of this got him another gig on another show and and made sure this guy got his ass into the union so he would get residuals on his next show this has been almost three years but here we are uh two months ago he had to do a gofundme just to get a tree off of his house what the fuck cartoon network you're no place to lecture anybody. You're no place to lecture anybody at this point. Uh, and again, we're seeing it time and time again. Rooster teeth. Look how diverse and inclusive we are as we insult you, the audience, who are probably more inclusive and less racist than we are. Watch us over at Crunchyroll talk about diversity and inclusion, which basically means white LGBTQ folks. That is our extent of diversity. Even in the fucking photo, here, here's a photo of the guys who worked on Aqua Teen Hunger Force, except Carrie Means. Except for Carrie Means. So, yeah. You know, I guess my feeling is if you're going to lecture people, you get your own house in order first. Why in three years' time? Why in three years' time has nobody given him more work? Why in three years' time has nobody sat down with him to make sure he got royalties? And you, Cartoon Network, you want to tell the audience that they're racist. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Um, yeah, get your own house in order, Cartoon Network, and then we'll we'll talk. So this has become an issue, and this is kind of the downside, I think, of, of you know, I talked yesterday about Hollywood kind of burning down and about productions moving outside of Los Angeles, but what's going on is a lot of these companies are moving production outside of Los Angeles. And they're sidestepping the unions and all of that. And look, I've got opinions about unions. I think in some cases, they're very, very good. For working conditions, I think they're good. I think if a show like Aqua Teen Hunger Force is still generating revenue, everybody should be participating in, in that. You know, everybody who helped bring that show to life, if, if, you know, you've got some people getting royalties and some people not getting royalties, I don't think that's very fair. Uh, you know, and when it comes to voice actors, you know, I understand the need for unions. Now, where I don't understand the need for unions is with situations like Kickstarter, where they basically, the staff wanted to be able to dictate what kinds of content Kickstarter would produce. Uh, but in this case, I think it's, it's good. But again, this is Warner Media, so they could avoid 
uh, dealing with the union. And because of it, we don't get Optimus Prime. We don't get Megatron. We do, but we don't get Peter Cullen and Frank Welker. And they're very, very pissed about it. Very pissed about it. In fact, uh, there was uh, one convention video where Peter Cullen was basically telling Rooster Teeth and Netflix to go to hell in a, a polite way. But he was basically like, fuck you guys. Uh, and, you know, you don't want Optimus Prime pissed off. But this is a problem. I think this is something that's going to have to be addressed, especially as animation becomes kind of a countrywide uh, thing that you can you can produce animated content from wherever you're at. And uh, if you're going to do royalties for some people, I think you should do royalties for everybody. I'm just I'm just completely baffled completely baffled as to why in three years time when this hit Forbes nobody's nobody's asking Carrie Means to, to work for them like Cartoon Network you've got other shows right you've got other shows why why aren't you calling but see he's he's freaking Frylock call him up call him up get him on a show yo get him on a show pay the guy make sure he gets his royalties how hard is that but instead, you want to produce some slick spot to get woke points, to get fist bumps on Twitter, to get uh, high fives from the friendly media uh, when Frylock is 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 effectively living living hand to mouth. You know, get your own house in order, Cartoon Network, before you preach to other people. I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm actually very very pissed off. I, I had no idea this this I had no idea this was a situation. I'm gonna put a link to carry means GoFundMe, i see people are still donating to it uh, i don't know if he has the if he has the means to to uh you know get his house fixed or what but this is bullshit they should have found a way to i mean even if they weren't contractually obligated to give him royalties at least give him some more work you know at least give him more work something something gonna wrap it up please subscribe we'll talk later